Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla News episode 249. Tesla is back growing again and actually more than most other automakers. And the Germans are truly in trouble and the ripple effects through their supply chain could be devastating. And Starlink is changing the world for the better. And the Berlin factory had its five-year anniversary since it was announced and what a powerhouse it has become. And Tesla charging had some big news this week as well. And the Cyberrock seems to be everywhere at the moment. And the Tesla Model 3 got yet another great review. And Wall Street is even starting to calculate the valuation of Optimus. Now that's a start. All of this and much, much more in today's episode. Let's start right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. Tesla is back growing again and actually the only one out of many automakers that is desperately trying to find ways to reduce their losses. Tesla sales numbers in China for week 45 came in and it was a new big sales record with 17,200 up from 12,700 last year. And Tesla is now close to 40,000 units in front of last year's sales numbers in China. Very impressive. Also consider that they were 20,000 units behind last year's numbers at some point. But that gap has been closed and they have almost now 40,000 units in front. And if you hear people talking about Tesla cutting prices and is hurting their bottom line and therefore Tesla is not doing very well. Well, Roland shared this chart this week that Tesla had the fourth highest Q3 net profit of the major automakers on this list, up 16% year over year. There are only two other companies that are growing year over year, some are losing big. So Tesla has made more net profit than the big German premium brands like Mercedes and BMW. But also Toyota has fallen 55% in net profits in Q3 and the big mighty Volkswagen 64%. GM is still holding on to the same numbers as last year, but Tesla is actually the one that has grown the most in Q3 of all these automakers. But the Germans are desperately trying to find ways to reduce their losses, and Volkswagen and Audi will try to rise the prices of their ICE cars to do so. And Audi will increase price on combustion models in December 2024. This is due to new EU requirements and the brand's weakening BEV sales. Volkswagen raised its ICE prices a month ago, but vehicles from Audi, we are talking about the A1, the A6, the A7, the A8, the Q2, the Q3, the Q7 and the Q8 model series are all affected by the price increases. Another in desperate attempt to reduce losses. Yeah, make your inferior product, the ICE car, more expensive is probably not the solution, but we will see how this will play out. But yes, I have been driving nothing but EVs for the last five and a half years and over 200,000 kilometers, and I would never go back to the dinosaur of the cars, the ICE cars, as Travis also wrote on X. In my opinion, this is one of the most underappreciated aspects of owning a Tesla. You leave home every morning with a full charge. And when you need to charge on the go, our massive charging network just simply works. Total life changer. Yes, exactly. As Tesla also wrote, no grim prompts, no gas price roulette, instead a full charge every morning. Yep, while I'm sleeping, my car is very cheaply being filled for the next day's journey. While the ICE car owners, well, their reality is a little bit different. And have you ever wondered what really is out there about you on the internet? Like, really out there? It's wild. We have seen one of the biggest data leaks ever impacting billions of people. And we're not just talking about your name or email, we're talking about social security numbers, your home address, every site you have ever visited. And yeah, even those embarrassing old screen names. But now, picture this, all of that personal gold in the hands of identity thieves. 
they could be opening loans or even worse in your name and how do they get it from data brokers they are a little black market of personal info but here's the twist you don't have to let them keep the power ever heard of incogni no well let me tell you why they are my new best friend and the sponsor of this video because incogni does the heavy lifting they are like your digital bodyguard they find where your data has been sold and they tell those data brokers hands off with incogni i get them to start cleaning for my info from 44 databases they found my information in they got the progress bar and everything on their site so you can watch your privacy come back to you piece by piece as you can see here on my dashboard they have removed my data from 38 data brokers and have only six left to go and here's the deal if you go through my link down below you're not only going to support this channel but you will get a massive 60 percent off with the code best in tesla it's a no-brainer for your privacy right so if you're tired of being an open book in the digital world click that link down below use my best in tesla code for that discount and let's lock down your privacy together trust me your future self will thank you and the germans are truly in trouble and the ripple effect through the supply chain could be devastating as Staka Auto shared on X, a supplier face a double blow. Legacy automakers stumble in their EV transition while ice market shrinks. The ripple effect through the supply chain could be devastating. 85% of companies report being heavily burdened by bureaucracy. 71% struggle with high electricity costs. 37% plan to relocate investment abroad. 41% report significant challenge due to lack of orders. 45% of companies are currently reducing workforce in Germany. The German automotive industry, particularly its mid-sized supplier, faced severe challenging, threatened its competitiveness. A recent VDA survey revealed a concerning trend of investment relocation with 37 percent of companies planning to move investment abroad primarily to other eu countries asia and north america the industry struggles with multiple pressures overwhelming bureaucracy high energy cost and growing order shortage the transformation towards climate neutrality and digitalization is forcing structural change with 45 percent of companies struggling currently reducing their their workforce despite skill shortage and only 1% of companies plan to increase investment in Germany while 13% intend to cancel investment entirely the outlook for 2024 remains pessimistic with 24% of companies expect condition to worsen but like I just talked about in the other story about Volkswagen raising prices it seems like they don't get what is needed or maybe they're just incapable of doing what is needed because as Alex also shared on X instead of changing technology for the better Volkswagen is changing their design and I'm not convinced it is for the better the new design for the Volkswagen ID2 BEV is supposed to convince people who are in the market for a not really low-cost electric vehicle but I believe consumers have understood by now software is the key for a good driving experience and not the looks yes Volkswagen is making the fiscal mistake here thinking the lack of demand is because of styling but Elon did explain this to us all the way back in 2012 uh, well the Tesla is a, a really different company to, to Fisker I mean we're te Tesla is a hardcore technology company um, and, and we, we do really serious engineering uh, in the case of Fisker, it's headed by, or was headed by, um, you know, Henrik Fisker, and uh, and he's he's a designer, so he's he's good at sort of the styling of the cars, um, but he thinks it's all about styling, mm -hmm. um, and it and and it's not, you know, the, the the reason we don't have electric cars is not for lack of styling, right. Yes, it's not because the lack of good design if the ID2 will not sell well. It will be because of bad user experience in software and driving, charging and whatever, Volkswagen will cheapen down on this car. It will not be because of bad design. And Starlink is changing the world for the better, helping the undeveloped country connect to the rest of the world. At the Tech for Nigeria Stakeholders Engagement Opening Ceremony in Ongun State in Southwest Nigeria, 
200 styling kit were sent to 120 schools in low-income communities. According to the 2021 Abraham Forum report, 89% of learners in sub-Saharan Africa lack household computers, 82% lack internet access, and at least 20 million live in areas without mobile coverage. Her board member, Ayudel Olaika, or something like that, expressed, We expect this will allow kids to access global resources and, more importantly, connect with peers worldwide. This partnership with Starlink will be revolutionary, and we are excited to see the transformation in these schools. But that is not the only place that Starlink is expanding. Minister of Communication Buka Michel announced the upcoming arrival of Starlink in Chad. According to the minister, Starlink will solve the problem of reliability and cost of internet service that has been raging in the country since the beginning of 2024. But we also saw SpaceX stated in an FCC filing that the Japanese Minister of Internet Affairs and Communication is quickly finalizing the necessary regulatory agreement to enable Starlink direct to sell. DTC service in Japan before the end of 2024. Nice. And the Berlin Factory could celebrate a five years anniversary since it was announced. I actually have an, an, an announcement. We've decided to put uh, the Tesla Gigafactory uh, Europe uh, in the Berlin area. Yeah. That's a news. And what a powerhouse it has become, producing the best selling car in Europe and in the world. Remember how GM was so happy they made 300,000 EVs in total in all of their lifetime, from all of their factories with all of their many models. But Tesla just made over 400,000 of their Model Ys just from the Berlin factory in just five years, from announcement of the factory, five years from the announcement, not from when the factory was done. So they built the factory in two years and then started producing the best-selling car in Europe because they started the real production in May 2022 and here, two and a half years later, they have produced over 400,000 cars. To call GM a competitor to Tesla is one of the biggest jokes in the car industry. And to the so-called activist in the trees in the Berlin factory, Tesla has planted over 2 million trees and recycle 90% of their water. Please show me any other automaker that has a more environmentally friendly car factory on this planet that is also only producing zero emission vehicles. Yeah, I didn't think so. What a powerhouse a Berlin factory has become, and what an embarrassment the activists are. But there are more embarrassment for GM with their little production numbers as Xiaomi, the phone company's CEO, marked the rollout of the company's 100,000 electric vehicles from the assembly line with a picture of him sleeping on the factory floor, paying homage or tribute to Elon Musk actually sleeping at the factory floor back in the days in production hell. Xiaomi's SU7 EV, which is a Model 3 competitor in China and cost only $30,000, only started production seven months ago. If GM is lucky, they will deliver 100,000 EVs in all of 2024. They have never delivered 100,000 EVs in a whole year before. And Xiaomi does it in only seven months with their first EV ever just very impressive and makes GM look even more weak in the EV race than they already do, making Biden's appraising Mary and GM as the leader in the EV race just becomes a bigger and bigger joke and will probably go down in history as one of the biggest jokes ever told in the automotive industry. And we have some big news from Tesla Charging this week. Tesla Charging shared on X, supercharging has come a long way. Our first opening in 2012 started with charging speed of just 90 kilowatts. Since then, our engineering team has constantly been upgrading our supercharger equipment. In 2023, we launched our version 4 Post, which made improvement in charging experience for all EVs. Today, we announced the version 4 cabinet, so not the stalls, but the cabinet that supplies the electricity for the stalls, capable of delivering up to 500 kilowatt for cars and 1.2 megawatts for semi-trucks. Fast 
faster charging support 400 volt to 1000 volt vehicle architecture including 30 percent faster charging cybertruck sexy vehicle enjoyed 250 kilowatt charging rate they already experienced on version 3 cabinet charging up to 200 miles in 15 minutes so don't sound like they will get an upgrade unfortunately but faster deployment version 4 cabinet power eight posts two times the stall per cabinet lower footprint and complexity equals more sight coming online faster next generation hardware cutting edge power electronics designed to be the most reliable on the planet with 3x power density enabling higher throughput with lower cost our first site with version 4 cabinet are going into permitting now first opening in 2025 so it seems like they have been able to get the cost of these new charging stall and cabinet to be more cost efficient to make even though they are able to deliver more throughput sounds very much like tesla get more for less and it seems like the cybertruck owner will get a huge bump in their charging capabilities i have reported on before that we have seen the cybertruck being able to do over 400 kilowatt of charging so that lines up quite nicely with the 30 percent bump in charging speed to get to the 500 kilowatt hours charging speed tester showed in their video of the cybertruck charging so that will be very cool and only about 3x faster than what ford's f-150 lightning can do so not so lightning anymore you can really start to see why ford is struggling with their lightning sales and have paused their production completely for the rest of the year while the cybertruck has overtaken it in sales and even become the third best-selling ev overall in the u.s you just get so much more bang for your buck with all the newest tech like 48 volt architecture and steer by wire that is just amazing i did try that out myself in the u.s this year and i can say that the standard for how a truck is supposed to drive has changed forever and now it will also get 500 kilowatt of charging speed not bad not bad at all and squeeze in the last shot news topics into this new show yes it's time for the tesla shorts while porsche is pricing its porsche car connection service bundle at 349 euros a year most of the service you will find in that bundle tesla offers for free but tesla also just reminded us this week that your tesla is getting more frequently updated with new features and improvement than your average phone for free and over the air still no one is really matching this level of updates and new features that tesla does but felix also shared another way the germans are trying to get more money out of their customers but in my opinion, just hurting their brand, as Felix wrote. Why Deutschland will lose? They don't give you a franc. They think you will pay for it. <laughs> oh my God. And Max, that works at Tesla in New York, making superchargers posted this on X. A lot of superchargers are now pre-assembled in factories like Gigafactory New York, making the installation process faster better quality and cheaper the cost savings are being passed on to drivers the never-ending hunt for efficiency matters to accelerate the transition to ev this is what shows up on site traditional built with excavation left versus pre-assembled superchargers on the right and tesla chargers are already half the cost of other manufacturers these pre-assembled versions are not going to make it easy for the competition to actually be competition and Edmund has given a very nice review of the Tesla Model 3 refreshed performance, even though they are usually a bit against Tesla. But this article started with Lamborghini performance at a fraction of the price. But they also wrote on X, the Tesla Model 3 performance is not only incredible quick, but we are just as impressed with what else it offers. Great real-world range, a quiet cabin, and a nimble handling that doesn't come at the expense of ride comfort. And Lars Murray even tuned in and wrote, awesome review guys, thanks for the kind words. Heads up, all Model 3s have dual climate zones. It comes on when both front seats are occupied. Then the control will pop up. 
We did this for efficiency. Every watt hour matters. So Edmonds didn't know that when there is no one on the passenger seat in the Tesla test that turns on the climate zone, they thought it was just not available. Still, so much Edmonds have to learn. And it seems like the Cybertruck is just everywhere at the moment, even though it's only sold in North America. Billionaire Osai has imported the Cybertruck to Ghana, and the attention is just off the chart. And Alex posted on X a fire blanket for BEV Works. Sunday, November the 10th, a charging Peugeot EV caught fire in the Euro Business Center parking lot in Vilnius. Extensive firefighter resources were dispatched, including six fire engines and ladder trucks. Firefighters prompted managed the situation by covering the vehicle with a Bridge Hill Pro X car fire blanket and using a powder extinguisher. Looks cool, literally. Yes, the big blanket are very cool solution for EV fires or any other car fire for that matter. And you can buy one for yourself if you like. But remember, BEVs are about 60 times less likely to catch fire than a nice car. And Tesla is about to ship a fix to the big sensory mode issue battery drain. Drew Baclino, the former vice president of powertrain for Tesla, said in February that the team was working to reduce sensory mode power consumption by roughly 40% in software update. But that was supposed to ship in Q2. But now it's being confirmed that Tesla is shipping out this fix with software update 2024.38.4, according to Not a Tesla app, aiming to resolve the issue with the battery drain. Nice, a very welcome update. And it is happening, ladies and gentlemen. As Steve wrote on X, Morgan Stanley has modeled a valuation for Tesla's humanoid program Optimus. It is not part of their current price target, but they assigned a present value of $485. So not yet in the price, but a sign that Wall Street are starting to try to calculate a valuation on Tesla's humanoid robot. So it will probably not be long before we see some real price target for Tesla's value from Wall Street that actually includes the valuation of Tesla's humanoid robot. Just as I said, Tesla will get some value for the humanoid robot but long before it's at full production. And nice to see. An Xping sister company, Xping Arad, had made the first global public flight at its China Arad show with their land aircraft carrier. If you want to learn more about the Xping Arad, don't forget to check out my video on the other channel called Best in Tech, where I actually went to visit Xping Arad in China. I will leave a link down below, definitely worth checking out and Waymo's 24-7 driverless robo-taxi ride are now open to everyone in Los Angeles. Previously, you could only ride after you received an invitation from the company. The waiting list was 300,000 people long, but now they're opening up to everyone. So let's keep an eye on Waymo's financial going forward to see if this should get them to profitability. But as they wrote, riders can now traverse nearly 80 square miles of Los Angeles County. And we intend to grow our service area to cover more of the city in the future. With no timeline, of course, as it has taken way more seven years to get five small areas mapped in five cities. So not moving at the speed of light. And Tesla Newswire shared this video and wrote, Tesla's autonomously executing an incredible collision avoidance maneuver, dodging a head-on collision at 75 miles an hour before the driver could even react. Tesla save lives, period. And the Cybertruck is becoming so popular that now celebrities are just fighting over who got the best-looking Cybertruck. Do you like Cybertrucks? I love my Cybertruck. I actually love my Cybertruck. You want another one? No, but I heard you was just trying to buy another. Did you ever get your new one? Somebody even... I, I got two. And mine's the hardest one out. No, it ain't. I knew you was going to say that. I no, seen you. I seen you. You act like I ain't seen you. That's what right the there. What the that they're doing? Yeah, they're right there. Listen, we've been... This friends. one? Listen, the we, hardest one out. No, no, that's the second hardest one. That's Come the on. one they got in their phone. Let's stop it. And Elon shared this chart and wrote, 
Something is wrong with this chart, but I can't quite figure it out. <laughs> because Electron made it look like they are just short of SpaceX flight in 2024. But they have not made the chart to fit SpaceX numbers. Here is a real scale of SpaceX dominance in the space industry. You can combine the rest on this list and they will only have made a little over half of SpaceX Falcon 9 launches alone. And we do see the Chinese are already copying the booster catch tower from SpaceX. The FFA need to speed up their approval process if they don't want the Chinese to catch up to SpaceX. And Alex wrote on X, just when you thought Yalopnik couldn't get any dumber. Ye oh yes, Yalopnik think they know more about satellite internet than Elon Musk. I mean, how dumb can one be? As Elon also replied to Alex post, they are substandard, a string of satellite increase bandwidth, not latency. And Trump has announced that Elon Musk and Vivek will lead the Department of Government Efficiency. Oh. Doge. As Trump said, it will become potentially the Manhattan Project of our time. Their object is to slash excess regulations and cut wasteful expenditures, restructure the federal agency. Their work will conclude no later than July the 4th, 2026. Well, I do believe Elon Musk is the right man for this task, as he is the one that bought Twitter, fired 80% of the staff, and saved a mountain of money and saved it from bankruptcy, and X has never been doing better and has never been better than it is today. And Facebook and Google followed in the footsteps not long after. Elon knows all there is to know about cutting excess fat. Annex also shared this on X, Rooftop Solar delivers a milestone of 80.5% share of electricity generated in West Australia. Yesterday at 1.30 p.m. distributed solar PV accounted for 2.12 gigawatt hours of output with natural gas and coal both reduced their share to 8.6 and 8.3 respectively. Nice, but he also shared this, the world's biggest wind and solar project planned for remote desert region in West Australia has locked its application for state environment approval with a mind-boggling 70 gigawatt hours of capacity, as big as the country's main grid. Oh yeah, now we're talking. And Tesla has become the first automaker in China to receive a vehicle privacy protection certification. This certification indicates that all Tesla models produced at the Shanghai factory meet the national standard for automotive data security compliance. This certification not only enhances Tesla's credibility in the Chinese market, but also removes regulatory barrier for the promotion and use of Tesla's vehicle, particularly in sensitive locations like government offices and airports. This move reflects Tesla's commitment to data security and personal privacy protection and under score Chinese emphasis on automotive data safely and one step closer for Tesla to get unsupervised full self-driving to China as well. And BYD paused its plans to enter the Canadian EV market following the implementation of 100% tariffs on EVs imported to Canada from China. So North America is still managing to keep the Chinese at bay. For now. And Sangler shared a little comparison from the 24th of August to the 8th of November at the progress of the Tesla semi-truck factory. And in just two and a half months, it has gone from basically nothing to something like 60% complete of the outshell of the factory. Just very impressive. And Yan shared this post, batteries are now playing a huge role in some energy systems around the world. Look at California. Not long ago, you wouldn't even be able to see the contribution from batteries. Few expected batteries to ever be able to compete. Today, instead of fossil fuel generation, batteries stores renewable electricity. Be prepared for much, much more to come. Nice. And Redwood Materials released this little video and wrote, despite being one of the largest consumers of lithium-ion batteries in the world, the US only recycle 5% of them. Let's change that. Find out where you can recycle with Redwood to help create a sustainable and secure energy future. 
nice. And it seems like my video from Tuesday is coming true, that the Chinese might be the first to jump on Tesla's full self-driving software, as both SAIC and Geely are apparently in talks with Tesla for full self-driving software. Still not confirmed, of course, but very likely. If you want to learn more, check out my video from Tuesday. And speaking of my videos, don't forget to check out my new video of Best in Tech, where we are going into the deepest pool in the world, flying over the skyline of Dubai and taking an e-foil on a ride. Link down below. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my new supporters of this channel. My new YouTube member, JS. Thank you so much. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. Winter is coming, but um, with the proper tools, it won't be an issue. That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot so others can find it on YouTube. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. And if you're already a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much for the support. But if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel or become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out as some extra perks like early access, ad-free versions of my videos, exclusive videos. So hit the members button or check out Patreon to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on X. I post pretty Pretty much all the news as it comes out and a lot more and check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show it is also possible to support the show without becoming a member or a patron there is a donation option down below or on my website bestintesla.com you can also become an executive producer and get news articles exclusive videos behind the scenes and access to all my research charts and spreadsheet also on bestintesla.com or as simple as hitting the super like button and thank you for watching and until next time take care out there and be nice